Assalamu alaikum. I am Hamad and in the today's lecture I'll be discussing about the essential skills required to be an ethical hacker. I have divided this lecture into three main sections. First one is hacking in general, then technical skills required, and after that activities you should involve yourself in to be increase your learning ability. So feel free to skip any sections and time steps are in the description. So let's start. There is a very high possibility you are just overexcited by the stuff being done in Mr. Robo and you just want to be awesome. So it might be a good idea to first ask yourself a question. Why do I want to become a hacker? The possible answers could be to hack my friend's Facebook account because I, I don't like him. To show off among my friends. Brother, he's a hacker. Stay away from him. To hack my neighbor's Wi-Fi. I got free internet for life. That's great. To hack bank's website and fill my account with millions. If you have any of the above reason, then please grow up. If you want to learn hacking, learn to help others. Help others to be secure. Help others to protect from bad guys. Help researchers to make internet a safe place. Almost everybody thinks that hackers are criminals and often do illegal activities. However, they are wrong. Many huge companies hire hackers to protect their systems and information and are extremely paid. Which means a hacker can even hack all of the system legally for which they get paid. The next thing is how to become a great hacker. I'll say that most people who get called great hackers are not actually too great or they are in the news because they got arrested. I presume that's not what you want. And what you are really looking for is to be a top tier security professional. Becoming a hacker is not a big deal. And it's not like the child's play. It depends how deep you want to go in the rabbit hole. If you want to use ready-made exploits, hacking is pretty easy. If you want to write exploits, it's a whole other story. And ethical hackers need to have a lot of patience, persistence, perseverance to try again and again and wait for the required result. Let me clear you one thing. There are no apps which will do hacking for you. And yes, it is a cumbersome task. You must keep in mind that there is a difference between an engineer and technician. Technician read manuals and engineers write those manuals. A lot of people will depend only on hacking tools. But hacking tools don't do everything. They are only the part of equation. Writing and understanding code to build or customize your own hacking tools are an important aspect of hacking. If you only know how to use some hacking software, then you are the technician. And in the language of information security, you are just a script kiddie. To be a hacker, the ability to deconstruct things is a must. I strongly believe that in order to dismantle a machine, you need to know its parts. Similarly, a mandatory prereq for breaking into networks requires a deep knowledge of how networks and computers work. Hacking without permission is illegal and jail is the least to bother in punishment. So if you are doing some hacking stuff without permission, then one major skill set you might also want to consider is how to survive in prison for a very long time. You must also understand that anything you do outside your home lab has legal, political, economic and social consequences. Do not let curiosity rob you of your freedom. Now let's get our attention towards technical subjects that you must touch to get started in the field of ethical hacking. The first one in the list is computer science. First of all, you need to have skills that goes beyond creating a Word document or being able to surf the internet. To be a hacker, you need to know how to use command lines, set up a network, or edit your computer's registry. You must also understand what a program is and how it is processed by the machine or why some programs work in one machine but not in another. A computer science degree is a good way to obtain this knowledge. The next subject to choose is the essential cyber security terminologies and concepts. Learn the basics of cyber security by exploring the essential terminologies as listed in the front of you. If you don't understand terminologies well, you would not be able to understand any of the hacking literature. 
some theoretical design concepts like principle of least privilege, need to know basis, defense in depth, segregation of duties, security by design are also important topics to study. After that learns the basic of various cyber security attacks like denial of service, brute force, dictionary attack, ransomware, learn how buffer overflow works, cross site scripting, SQL injection etc. The next one in the list is computer networks. Consider that you will enter a system from a remote location. So you must know how networks works, not only the concepts but the inner workings too. How each type of packet is formed and the tricks you can do to manipulate its bits. And learn how to use this knowledge with some programming language. Deep knowledge of protocols, network standards, network devices are also important. Here I have shown you some important areas of study in computer networks. Operating system is a very important subject. Operating system is actually the interface between the end user and the hardware. All other applications run on the operating system, so it is one of the major area of study to work as a hacker. You must understand how OS manages different hardware components and how processes runs on them. Understand how different operating systems implement the network, how they manage passwords, their file permissions, and where it stores the important information. Familiarize yourself with the various operating systems, for example, Windows and Linux. Special expertise in Linux machine is recommended. Kali and Parrot distribution of Linux is most preferable for hacking because they have tons of tools already available in them. If you are interested in exploit development or reverse engineering of malwares or exploits, then deep knowledge of computer architecture is a must. You must know CPU internals, how memory and its hierarchy, buses and IO subsystem works together. Also familiarize yourself with processor architecture, programming languages and compilers and data structures etc. You should be able to tell me how a processor moves instructions and data around. You should be able to tell me what a data structure looks like in memory. You should be able to understand assembly language very well. Reverse engineering is a process to debug or disassemble and analyze software to see what and how software processes its information and how to extract this information from memory at runtime. Reverse engineering enables you to open a piece of malware and rebuild it with additional features and capabilities. Just like in software engineering, no one builds a new application from scratch. Nearly every new exploit or malware uses components from other existing malwares. In addition, Reverse engineering enables the hacker to take an existing exploit and change its signature so that it can fly past IDS. Most of the dynamic websites are powered by database systems. So deeper understanding of various database models and their implementation is a topic you must study. Understand RDBMS and SQL standards, NoSQL, understand how databases are designed and implemented and how they are used and how they can be protected from abuse. You must also go through different database management systems like Oracle, MySQL, SQLite, MongoDB, etc. Web applications are probably the most fertile ground for hackers in recent years. The more you understand about how a web application works in the databases behind them, the more successful you will be. Understanding of web pages and its technology is a must for web application hacking. Go ahead and have a look at OWASP and web services architecture. As an elite hacker, programming is something you couldn't neglect. Without programming skills, the hacker will be forced to use other hackers tool. This limits your effectiveness. To develop your own unique tools, you will need to become proficient in at least one of the scripting or programming language. The different options you have are Python, Perl, Ruby, PowerShell or Bash scripting. Also. Spend some time understanding how to debug and reverse engineer your own code. There are some activities that I want you to be involved yourself in. The first one is blogging. Start writing and sharing some simple articles on various available blogs in your own language on any of the hacking topics. Writing will give you in-depth learning experience and you'll start to learn better because you know you must write an article on the tool, so you will have to research about it, and as a result, you will get to learn a lot of new things. When you are sharing your article, you are helping the community as well. 
and another advantage is you are going to be building and increasing your brand value consequently helping you in your career ahead try to deliver some video lectures or speak at local meetups and trust me it can do wonders for you join different hacking forums and make some friends who are also interested in ethical hacking because collaboration makes your learning adventure enjoyable it's always good to put yourself in real test environment to find out what you are really qualified to do capture the flag events are a good option to try this is where the actual fun begins start taking part in a bug bounty program initially it might seem difficult but slowly you will get the hang of it and as a result you will get acknowledged and will start getting thank you and congratulations email for your hard work and dedication an open source computer security project helps you a lot in polishing and testing your hacking skills contribute and be a part of them even when your contribution is small it can add a big value to your area the last thing that i want to say is as an expert ethical hacking you have to be jack of all trades and master of nearly all of them and yes keep in mind practice is actually the key if you like this video you are requested to subscribe my channel and like this video and share among your friends and if you think this video was not helpful for you then please comment down below and tell me how can i improve my video lectures thanks a lot